So how do you really create passive income in real estate? Now, despite what they all tell you, right, most of the time you hear people talking about passive income in real estate, it's usually false. They're usually lying to you. It's usually people that are active real estate investors, people that put a lot of time, a lot of energy into it, and it's not passive at all. They can be flippers, they can be wholesalers or syndicators, people that are doing their own investments, their own work, trying to tell you that what they're doing is passive, when in reality, the truth is, they're working their freaking tails off. What we're covering today is what is real passive investing, whether it be in real estate or otherwise, and then two, what are some of the best ways you can do that? What are the, really the three ways that you could do that that I like personally? All right, so first and foremost, let's get just clear the air about what's going on out there with a lot of influencers. They're all trying to tell you that everything's passive, that's all great and dandy, and you know, and everything's that their life is easy, and they'll take pictures of themselves with their fancy cars and their houses and pools and all that kind of crap. But the truth is, is that guys, they work their tails off. They probably work more hours than you do in their business. Now they might eventually get to the point where they work less hours, but that's after a lot of toil a lot of trouble and a lot of hard work. The truth is they have businesses, right? And businesses are not passive. Nothing like that is passive at all. Passive investing requires you to use your own money, right? Your own moolah, use that to actually create that time freedom for yourself. You use the money to buy your time back, not trying to spend more time to create more of the money back. So what is real passive income when it comes to real estate investing? Let me give you a few examples. So turnkey properties, what does that really mean? When most people, they buy a real estate, they think they're buying a property in their backyard. They go and they buy that rental that they saw in their town or wherever it might be nearby. They buy it and then they have to fix it up a little bit so it's rent ready. And then they go and they property manage it and they're dealing with all the tenants, the toilets and the trash and then they're hating life. Now they might still make good money with real estate, there's no doubt. However, that's not what we're talking about here. Turnkey real estate is much more hands-off. Turnkey real estate means that you usually hire a turnkey company, someone who actually has properties that they've already found. They already know that are for sale, that you could go and purchase. You already know ahead of time what you're gonna make in rent, at least within a pretty close range. And then of course going in, you even know that they're gonna help you do everything else. So they're not only gonna help you find the property, they'll help you buy the property, whether you're trying to get connected with banks or whatever you need to do to get that mortgage. Then they're gonna either be the property manager or connect you with somebody who's a, who's a property manager in that area to do that property management for you. So now you are hands off. Now you're just collecting the checks. Yes, you'll pay the mortgage payment if you have a mortgage. Yes, you'll pay taxes and insurance. Yes, you'll even have to pay for a property manager. But ideally, after all that's paid, you still have profit that you're collecting. Do you have to manage the property manager? Yes, don't just be brain off. My wife and I made that mistake recently for some properties we bought in Alabama, and we ended up not watching closely what was going on and realized that the representative we had at the company wasn't exactly being forthright, was charging us for things that she shouldn't have been charging us for. And so you gotta make sure you're watching it. But again, much more hands off than someone who's actually buying the property right there local, and they're trying to be the ones going and doing the repairs and deal with the tenants, all that stuff. I don't even know my tenants' names. Honestly, I really don't. The property manager does all that work for us. They find the tenants, they screen them, they run their credit and all that kind of stuff. They're the ones that get them in, renew their leases, do all the paperwork, which I hate paperwork, so I love that. They do all that work. That's what a turnkey rental is. And here's the cool thing. Nowadays, because of that reason, you can have a turnkey rental anywhere in the country. There's even clients of mine that are international that have turnkey properties in the US. Why? Well, here's the great thing is that I know within the United States, like I live in the Western half of the United States, rentals here are not great. Prices are high, rents are not so high. But if I go out east to the southeast or the Midwest, I can buy a property for cheaper and still make great rent. I make more profits. So when I buy properties, I'm buying them in the Midwest. That's why I had properties like in, in Tennessee, North Carolina or Alabama, places like that where I know that I can make good money versus trying to buy it in, here in Utah, which really the rental market in Utah sucks. I don't want to do stuff out here. That's how I lose money, not how I make money. So that's a great thing about turnkey real estate. The next one is syndications. Now syndications is just amazing. Now you have to be careful a little bit. I'll give you some warnings here that goes with syndications, but syndication very simply is where you and other investors pool your money together to tackle a specific project. This could be something like buying an apartment building. Obviously you probably don't have enough money, you probably don't have the millions of dollars lying around to just buy an apartment building by yourself. That's why you have your money pooled with other investors and then you get a share of that ownership. So very often these syndications mean that you're an owner, a partner in the project, 
but a limited partner. So you don't have all the liability risk in case of lawsuits. So you get to pool your money in with other investors, get paid a percentage. This could apply to apartments. This could be like self-storage units, which by the way, self-storage units work better in a recession because when people downsize, they throw their junk into storage units where you can make more money. This could also work even in like the oil and gas space. There's some syndications there where you can make money in oil and gas and buy these huge tracts of land in like Texas or Oklahoma, for example, all because you pool money with other investors. Heck, you can even buy in into franchises. I have several clients that are have ownership in franchises like car washes and things like that, where again, pull your money with other investors to go and invest in that investment, that business. Again, now you're the person that's passive. You're not the person doing all the operations. That's the main investor who is usually the main partner, but the, all the other financing partners are going in with their money. You get prorated based on the percentage of ownership you have in that company. Now, the downside of this could be is if something goes wrong, even though you may not get sued, if something goes wrong, you could lose your money, right? There's always risk. There's always things that can happen. In the last two years, we saw apartments especially get hit really hard because the interest rates rose so quickly all the apartment values dropped by about 15 to 20%. So that made it very difficult for those kind of real estate operators to try to find ways to make money or keep it afloat when the cost went up so much higher. So you gotta be careful because when you're in a syndication, you're not the one doing the investment. That's the good news. That could also be the bad news. You have to trust in somebody else. So be sure that you do good due diligence. Research those people. As a bonus, I'll just tell you this. Uh, one thing I look for is I look to see if, if they've been in the business for at least 12 to 15 years doing that specific investment. So for example, I don't want someone who's buying, you know, that's normally buying self storage units, going out and buying coffee farms or going out and investing in marijuana farms and things like that. They don't know what they're doing. You know, I've seen people try to go from apartment investing to like senior home investing, which senior homes could be another type of investment. But again, if they don't have the experience in those places, you're gambling with a lot of your money. Don't be the guinea pig. Let other people be the guinea pig. You just invest with people that go for the same old kind of boring investments that they've always done, right? My mantra is boring is sexy, right? I think the more boring the investment, the more boring it is for that person to do that investment, the better. Like they're just sleeping and they can still make this work. That's when you know you got somebody good. And you want somebody who has good integrity. They've had a good track record paying people back over those last 12 or 15 years. And you want 12 or 15 years because you want to have somebody who has a full market cycle. They've been through the ups, they've been through the downs. They weren't somebody who just showed up in real estate in 2018 and said, hey, I made great money in 2018, you should invest with me. Well, guess what? Idiots made good money in 2018. You don't want to be one with those idiots, okay? So be sure you're careful when you're getting into things like syndications. Now, this one's one of my favorites recently. I got into a partnership where I was a main majority partner and I got some other partners to do all the work. And, and that we did that with raw land. So I actually got into a deal recently where I paid them a good hundred grand plus into just hiring them to do it. And then I put more of my own money. So I put about 150,000 in. And what I've been doing for the last two and a half years has been reinvesting all the cash flow. So as the cash flow comes in from the raw land, reinvest it. Now, how do we make money off raw land? Because you might think, well, you can't rent raw land very easily. Well, not per se, but you can become the bank with the raw land. You could have raw land that you turn around and sell to somebody else, but you sell it to them like you're the bank. So you have, they have like a mortgage payment to you. So you could make monthly income or even make more money. So recently I just had last week where there was land that we bought for 25,000 that we turned around and sold for 74,000 and they're going to be paying us 9.99% interest for the next 15 years, unless they pay it off early. Now I'm making over 800 bucks a month off of that 25 grand. You do the math, that's like making 10 grand off of 25 grand. That's like a 40% return on that specific project. That's awesome. And the best part of this is I didn't do anything with it. I was merely the person financing the money. My partners were the ones doing all the work, all the labor. In total, I've probably invested over 400 grand, including the fee that I paid them to pay for their staff and everything else. And still at this point, now as of the recording of this video, it'll probably be more by the time you actually watch this. So again, raw land, something you think would be so, I mean, literally you're buying dirt, right? To then sell somebody dirt. And yes, you can actually make good, good money off of dirt. So. Uh, just remember that you know God's only making so much of it, right? So make the best advantage if you have to do that. You know what? And let me just give you a qu guys a quick bonus. Here's one of my favorite investments right now in this current market is lending. Lending your money like you are the bank, right? Lending your money to somebody where they pay you a contractual return for that money. So for example, I have a friend right now that he said, listen, if you give me $100,000 today, I will pay you 1% a month or 12% a year. Awesome. That means if I give him $100,000, I get paid $1,000 a month. You realize that if when I was a financial advisor, if somebody had $100,000, I would tell them if they didn't want to run out of money in retirement to only pull out $3,000 a year. And here I'm getting paid $1,000 a month 
and I'm not even touching the $100,000, right? So there's ways to get the money to leverage to pay you. So they borrow the money, they pay you the interest rate like you're the bank. And the reason they do that is because it's much easier to deal with people than it is dealing with banks. Because banks can change rules, banks can take forever because there's all the bureaucratic red tape and stuff. But if you're a lender, if you're lending money privately to them, they will pay you a higher interest than they'll even pay you the bank because of that convenience factor. So again, a warning is you gotta make sure you're dealing with reputable people that have a lot of experience doing what they were doing. But I'll tell you, I mean, that's great. I mean, I even lent out my money last summer, $50,000 with a 15% per year return on it. And that was because he was desperate. And I said, awesome, I'll take you up on that deal. Another friend said, hey, if you can get a million dollars together, I'll pay you 18% a year or one and a half percent a month. So off of that million dollars, that'd be paid $15,000 a month, right? There's just all kinds of ways to do it. Again, these are just examples. I'm not saying this is typical. Some people might only pay you like 6% or 8% a year, right? But either way, they're paying you a return, paying you an interest rate for that money that you're lending. So right now, especially with the way the interest rates have been with banks lately, you're now able to get a little bit better returns than you were able to get just a few years ago in that lending space. All right, so now a lot of people will ask me, they're like, well, how do I know how much passive income I could actually make in my own situation? Here's an easy way to figure it out. Go to moneyripples.com. There's a passive income calculator you can actually try out, fill out completely, and you can pretty accurately figure out how much passive income you could be creating in about 12 months. So go and try that today.